This is a sermon by Bishop Gregory Brewer at the celebration of new ministry of the Reverend Dr. Joy Rose at St. Mary's Episcopal Church, Daytona Beach, Florida, July 21st, 2013. I was listening to Ken and Bennett read the words of, in this letter of institution, my letter of institution to your new rector. And it's a pretty demanding charge. Having committed yourself to this work, do not forget the trust of those whom you have cho who have chosen you. Care alike for young and old, strong and weak. Notice the word, care alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. By your words and in your life, proclaim the gospel. That is what people expect, you know. I mean... Joy, they notice when I get a haircut. I'm, I'm always on public view. And quite honestly, it is in fact your actions and the character of your life that says far more to most congregations than anything that you wind up saying in your sermons. Love and serve Christ's people. In other words, you don't lord it over them. Did you notice the operative word in the gospel is friend? Friends. If you build a love relationship with people so that you can actually look at each other in the eye and say, we're becoming friends. That inspires a level of trust that allows mountains to be moved. That's all of that loving one another and being friends is prelude to ask whatever you will in my name and it shall be done for you. You can get things done if you're not friends. You can have enough love and respect for the institution. You can have enough loyalty to a local congregation. You can have enough ability to be able to sort of work together with people even though you don't particularly like them. And you can get some things done. The trains arrive on time. Things might look good. Even the liturgy actually makes some sense and it works. And nobody does any terrible faux pas. But what you don't have, if you're not loving each other and learning what that means, if you're not finding a way to actually enjoy one another's company, to laugh together, to be with one another, not just in the structure of a worship service, but within a meal. The laughter that comes down the hallway as you're getting ready to go into a meeting as opposed to the kind of political things that happen, the, the parking lot meetings that happen before the real meeting actually takes place. Because really it's the parking lot meetings that are the real meetings. You see, if, if there's not that kind of camaraderie and care, you can get work done. But that's in no way love one another as I have loved you. <clears throat> that's no platform for whatever you ask in my name. It will be done for you. You can look good. You can get a lot done. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the heart is warm, that the words are gentle, and the smiles come easily, and the laughter isn't forced, and politeness just holds the veneer together. I've been in churches like that. Haven't you? Nod your head, because I know you have. It doesn't look a lot like Jesus, does it? And yet, the scripture for tonight really calls us to something, I think, much richer, much more winsome, much more gracious and kind, much more reflective of the very love that we, in fact, have been shown in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. It's the greater love has no one than this that he laid down his life for his friends. friends. His friends. So it seems to me the first task is you now have a new rector, a new charge, a new ability to begin to think about the future is that if there is, in the midst of your life over the course of this interim period, 
or any other that may be going on in the church that calls back your history into a places that bring you into political scheming or fear or power politics. Oh, I would ask of you that you would ask God, Lord, break down these divisions. Heal us from the past. Teach us what it means to enjoy one another's company. Give us the grace to forgive. We confess to you, O Lord, that we don't know how to love one another as I have loved you. You need to work that in us for it to happen. <laughs> but the wonder of it is, is that that's exactly what God desires to do. Especially here, when your patron is the very gentle Saint Mary of all people. This is a congregation that I believe with all of my heart really could, in an area that desperately needs it, express in very profound, sacrificial, and joyful ways the very love of Christ. <coughs> because I believe with all my heart that's actually what people long for in a church. Sure, good music will get you in the door, and you all do an outstanding job, by the way. And there are plenty of other things that people might find initially attractive. But that's really not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is something far deeper. And that's what this in service calls us to. So even at the very beginning, the collect calls that we pray for joy, that with patience and understanding, she may love and care for your people. That's, that's something more than just being a decent administrator or pretty good in the pulpit or even really good in the pulpit or somebody who knows how to get a committee meeting organized. Now you need those skills, otherwise people just don't get along. Administration in some ways is that spiritual gift of helping people and enabling people in such a way that they actually can love and care for one another and their community in very practical ways. It's not just that you're good with a pencil and you can balance a balance sheet. You actually know where to, to quote uh, one author, you know where to put people on the bus in a way that actually causes things to move forward. It, it's supernatural. It's the gift of Christ in our midst. It's the gift of God changing our hearts so that what happens in the midst of the things that we do, there's light about it. There's a winsomeness to it. There's almost a wonder. So that whether it's over a meal, whether it's preparing a service, whether it's gathering together in worship, even in the midst of tough circumstances, hard decisions that need to be made, because love does not spare you from difficulty. But what love does is it holds you together in the midst of difficulty so that you can get through it together. God shows up. He collects and gathers people together. And in the midst of that atmosphere of support, people find themselves doing things they actually never actually thought possible. Only God could have made this to happen. That's the real meaning of the lesson that we read in Ephesians about grace being given and calling some to be apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers, equipping the saints for the work of ministry. Grace means love manifested. That's what it is. Love enabling us to do things that we never ever could have done on our own. And so it is exactly in that atmosphere of love and support where grace flows through. God responds to the sacrifice things begin to happen that we could never ever imagine. And people begin to rise up with a kind of dignity, a purpose, a courage that they never ever believed could happen. And God begins to work miracles because people made the commitment to learn how, by God working in us, love one another as I have loved you. It is a mystery, but it is not past understanding. It is a congregation and leaders 
whose hearts are being broken for one another, that releases the power and grace of God in a way that actually changes lives. And I want to tell you, my friends, it comes no other way. There is no plan B. So if you want to settle for leadership that commands, for a service that looks good, for preaching that's clear, for Sunday schools that are well run, and buildings that look good, you can have it. But that doesn't mean that lives are changed. And that's what the gospel is all about. Lives are changed where in the midst of those very good things, people are learning how to love and care for one another. And in the midst of that love and care, the sacrifice arises. People begin to stand tall. Serving, serving one another becomes a joy even when it's trying. And you know as well as I do, it can be very trying. And Jesus, who is our chief shepherd, begins to express his love, his grace, and his supernatural power in our midst. And we begin to discover, to our amazement, that the love of one another, as I have, le have loved you, actually begins to flow in the life of a congregation. Oh, joy, is there anything that I long for for St. Mary's? It is that. It is that. So as you pray for this new rector, as you receive her as your leader, as you make the decision to move forward together, I pray, I pray that this congregation, by God's grace and mercy, honor her patron, be known as a congregation that loves with forbearance and gentleness in a way that actually draws people to Christ. If that happens, then truly the city set on a hill that is the calling of this church will take place. Amen. Amen.